Hello Booktube and welcome to Weekly Reads. As I said last week in last week's Weekly Reads, um, this week's weekly uh, reading would be a bit disposable um, because I was going to be quite busy during various periods this week and that was borne out. Uh, on Sunday, me and my mom watched uh, the Four Children of the Apocalypse for a significant chunk of time. It was about five hours because um, it was Death's birthday, the youngest of the four. Um, and they were a blast. Um, but what me and my mom did was um, like I bought him two presents and then she bought him a little play kitchen set that we I wrapped up and then I put into a box um, with the intention of maybe putting the toys in the box and my brother could like take that box home with them. War and Death had other ideas. They decided to fill the box with um, little toy blocks and then proceeded to hack the box to pieces using kitchen utensils. It was amazing um and then we were going to watch them on tuesday because famine the oldest of the four children had a doctor's appointment but my brother called to say or texted to say that they had um decided that he take her and my sister-in-law would watch the other three but the four children did come over today and because my brother had a few things to bring over so he brought the four children of the apocalypse along and they stayed for about uh, an hour and a half and who oh, they were uh, something else. Um, feminine pestilence were a bit bored because I guess they'd gotten into trouble and didn't have their devices so they were acting out. Um, War was mostly on his tablet, which is what he's want to do, and Death uh, spent time either on his tablet or waving around a, uh, the handle of a toy broom with the um, broom head off, imagining it to be a sword <laughs> or something. And then him and uh, Famine uh, built uh, some buildings with uh, the blocks and blocks we had. So anyway... So, I ended up missing out on a chunk of reading time today because of that. Um, and it was a really good book that I'm reading at the moment. But I'll get to that because now I need to talk about the books I've read. So, on Monday, I decided to give a Bill Redemption shot. And I had another go at Burnt Sugar by Evan Dolce. And I didn't get on with it either again. So I bailed rather quickly. And on Saturday, I decided to start um, Docile by K.M. Zapara. Uh, and I've mentioned many times that I've approached this book with much trepidation. I was never sure, like, let me rephrase it. The more I've learned about this book, the more reviews I've read, I will... There's a lot of, there was a lot of trepidation with this book. And that trepidation was borne out. Um, I made it about 46 pages in before I bailed. And I honestly hated every moment I spent with this book. Um, as I was reading, I was taking frequent breaks. Uh, my face, I could tell I was just, this book was just bad. Um, so what is it about? So basically in the near future, for some reason, I'm not entirely sure what the end story reason is. I mean, the obvious reason, of course, is to set up this this sexual slave situation. But anyway, 
So in the near future United States, for some stupid reason, um, debt slavery, or to deal with the debt crisis, um, debtors prisons have been established as well as periods of temporary debt servitude or debt slavery. Um, so individuals with significant amounts of debt, which seems to be quite a lot of people, especially of going to college, is going to put you into debt for $200,000. And I'm not talking about an Ivy League. Or at least I don't think it was an Ivy League. Anyway. So, in order to kind of cancel much of this debt or pay off much of this debt, individuals can sell themselves or put, put themselves up for auction where they are, their debts are bought and they are put into set periods of indentured servitude. Um, in order to make these slaves more amenable and also to not necessarily humiliate them after their terms of service, there's this chemical or medication called docilene, obviously the docile of the title, that makes into people more, or does people more uh, obedient, as well as preventing um, short-term memories from forming, so that what these people are forced to go through during their period of slavery, or as enslaved, is you don't remember it. Um, although this medication isn't 100% perfect because the main character, Elisha's mother, um, came out of this process incredibly damaged. Which begs the question why exactly they didn't sue because one would think that they could have gotten a lot of money out of that. But anyway, again, so the family's still in debt. And in order to stave off debtor's prison, Elisha decides that he will become a docile. He will enter himself into this indentured servitude, slavery period, and refuses to take docilene because of what it did to his mother. So at some point, his owner, Alex, who is getting a docile because of some reason to do with the fact that he needs it to prove that he's worthy of leading the company. Being a good business person is, yeah. If you wanna inherit a company and make it good, be a good business person. You don't need a romantic partner or a sex slave to do it anyway um so yeah um it's just so yeah just the whole plot the characters are annoying um very little different di that differentiates the two um the world building is bizarre and just bad um there's a reference to like a community barn and other things that make me wonder okay so is this some kind of sort of like agricultural area or like just what exactly is going on here and then the character of Elisha, which I wish had been a bit more concrete and not so wishy-washy. It just, I hated every moment I spent with this book. So that begs the question, why the, did I buy it? Um, it's, uh, 
work of LGBTQ science fiction and gay science fiction. And I want to read um, LGBTQ or gay science fiction and fantasy. And I'm on the lookout for novels uh, written by LGBTQ writers or featuring LGBTQ plots. And there's always a danger, always a bit of a trap in that in searching for representation in yearning to see yourself represented that the works on offer is are going to be crap or just going to be bad and yes i think some readers do have a higher a high tolerance for crap i do not and it gets incredibly frustrating um, particularly when you're looking for it, you're looking for it, and you're finally finding more books of rep with representation or whatever, and then it doesn't work. It's just bad, and yeah. So <sighs> deeply, deeply disappointed and frustrated with this book. Um, so. More than likely, whenever I get around to having my great book purge or pruning, well, if it's not a whole lot of books, it'll be a pruning. If it's a lot, it'll be a purge. I think I'm going to try to send this back to pals. Maybe somebody else will like it, although I don't see how. Anyway, now, while Docile was a horrendous reading experience, my reading week actually wasn't, was actually really good. Um, I ended up reading a lot of manga, um, since this was kind of a week in which I suspected I wasn't going to get a whole lot read. Uh, manga, I can read quite a few volumes and not a whole lot of time, not a large amount of time. I think it took me about 45 minutes to read most of these volumes. Um, so I got quite a few in, and then also the book that I started yesterday, and I'll get to at the end, and we'll carry over into next week's reading, I'm loving as well. So let's get talking about the manga. So the first um, manga I read, and all of these are volume one, so when I list them down below, I'm not going to bother with volume one. These are all boy, volume ones. So the first one I read is um, was a Toilet Bound Hanako-kun by Idol Ro. So this is the story of Nene Yamashiro. She is a first year high school student um, who's been told about a ghost um, residing in her school. In fact, there are a lot of ghosts um residing in her school but one of the most famous is a ghost bound to a girl's toilet um hanako-kun or hanako-san um so nene goes she performs the ritual to summon hanako-san and discovers that hanako is not a female ghost he's actually a young teen boy ghost hanako-kun um, and he pretty much does as requested. Um, Nene asks to, for help to find a boyfriend, particularly the most popular guy in school. And gradually over the course of trying to attract his attention or force a relationship, she ends up becoming bound to, uh, Amane's, uh, kun, the, um, Hanako-kun and she becomes his assistant and gradually she begins to help him manage the other ghosts in the school and i love this this is amazing i 
love the story and the plot, the characters. Um, later on into the, in this volume, um, the third member of the trio kind of shows up, um, and he's a trip. And I just I love the artwork. Let me see if I can uh, find a really good um, picture of it. So I should have thought of this better, but like so, like this here. I just I enjoyed it. This book was amazing. And I'm quite happy I picked it up. <sighs> now, if only I could manage to get the succeeding volumes, um, which I'll get to towards the end, uh, because some of the other manga have a similar issue. So um, once I finish talking about these, I'll go on a bit of a rant. So next up, I read um, Mag Magi by Shinobu Otaka. This is a manga inspired by the uh, Middle East and the Thousand and One Nights. It's the story of a young wizard named Aladdin who is searching for a friend. Um, and he goes on a number of adventures. During his wanderings, he meets a young man called Alibaba who eventually gets Aladdin to agree to journey into a dungeon in this world a number of dungeons of magical locations have appeared that attract any number of heroes to try to sort of clear them out uh, take the treasure and what have you and aladdin alibaba go into a dungeon and uh, begin their adventure and i really enjoyed this um, this was a very fun first volume, and I quite enjoyed the artwork too. And I really like um, like Alibaba's character that he's not necessarily a really good guy. He's actually a bit of a jerk. Um, and I also quite enjoyed Alibaba's character. I mean, not Alibaba, uh, Aladdin's character. So you know, I'm looking forward to reading more of Magi as well. And then after a break for lunch, so all of these I read on Saturday. I read four volumes of manga. Um, so the second half of my manga reading on Saturday was the first volume of Eden Zero by Hiro Mishima. This is uh, Mishima's current work. It's the story of a young man called Shiki who was raised on a planet of robots. It's sort of a tourist planet. Um, one day, a young woman named Rebecca, who's basically a YouTuber, uh, comes to film videos. Um, the inhabitants turn anti-human all of a sudden, and so Rebecca and her cat, her pet cat, Hap, well, her exceed uh, cat Happy, who comes from fairy tale, um, and Shiki sort of leave together. An abandoned plan, uh, planet, and then they begin going on adventures. As um, Shiki claims to have seen this um, goddess figure, or remembers this god goddess figure, so the trio begin going on adventures. And this volume is the beginning of them sort of getting a group together to go adventuring. And I really enjoyed it. This volume was quite nice. I really liked. Um, Shiki's character and Rebecca's character. It's just really well done. And the final uh, manga I read on Saturday is another, is um, Shinobu Otaka's current series, Orient. Orient is, takes place in uh, the Sengoku period or very early, maybe midway through, what we would call the Tokugawa Shogunate. Um, in this world, at some point during the Sengoku period, um, demons invaded Japan and defeated 
um, the samurai who fought against them and declared themselves to be gods. Um, Masashi, the main character, and his friend Kojiro um, are aspiring samurai. Kojiro comes from a samurai family and Masashi wishes to join them. Uh, during the course of this volume, uh, Masashi is a apprentice miner who discovers that the miners are enslaved to feed the demons and Masashi and Kojiro begin to fight against the demons and are interrupted and joined by a band of samurai. I, I love that the artwork and the design of the, the volume. I'm not entirely sure I quite like Masashi's character. Um, he's a little too bloodthirsty, I think, for me. I think maybe if his goal would be to sort of free Japan without sort of this kind of trophy hunting that killing these demons, particularly high ranking ones, are a state symbol. Whether he his goal is to free Japan by whatever means necessary, doing whatever it took. Whether that's killing these demon lords or like building coalitions and doing the groundwork and starting smaller and whatever. But anyway, but I I quite enjoyed this volume, um, what I read, even with my quibble. So on Sunday before the four children of the apocalypse came, I got two volumes read. Um, Full Metal Alchemist volume one uh, by Hiromu Arakawa. This is the story of the Elric brothers. Um, they are two alchemists who are in search of the Philosopher's Stone in order to uh, regain their bodies. When they were younger, in order to resurrect their mother, the boys attempted human transmutation. Any human transmutation is doomed to failure, and the boys suffered severe consequences. Edward, the oldest, um, lost his leg, and Alphonse, in the armor, uh, lost his entire body. In order to save Alphonse's soul, Edward sacrificed his arm in order to inscribe um, and to pretty much implant Alphonse's soul into a suit of armor, which is why Alphonse is basically a suit of armor. And the boys join the state alchemists, the military, in order to pursue the Philosopher's Stone. So this volume, which was a delight to reread, um, saw the boys going on a series of adventures in search of, of the Philosopher's Stone. And so this first volume and a few volumes succeeding this one are all uh, episodic. It's not until later that the main plot really begins to become the focus and the entire series is one long arc after that. But I really enjoyed this. I cannot wait to get more volumes in. And then the second one is another reread, and that is uh, Bleach Volume 1 by Tite Kubo. Um, Bleach is the story of Ichigo Kurosaki, um, who can see ghosts and interact with ghosts. One day he meets a young Shinigami or Soul Reaper called Rukia Kuchiki, who is in pursuit of a hollow, a evil corrupted ghost. But she cannot find this hollow because something is interfering with her uh, scanner. That interference so happens to be Ichigo, whose uh, spiritual power is quite immense. Um, the hollow attacks, uh, Rukia is injured and forces Ichigo to become a substitute Soul Reaper. Unfortunately for Rukia and Ichigo, um, Ichigo takes all of her powers. So he is pretty much a living Soul Reaper and he basically has to fulfill Rukia's commitments until she can regain her power. So much of this volume is devoted to him learning the ropes and it is an amazing 
first volume. I just, I love it. Uh, particularly um, the chapters which feature um, Orihime, um, Ichi, one of Ichigo's classmates, and also the introduction of Chad, who is an amazing character. I just, I really love this first volume. Um, so I'm looking forward definitely to picking up more. And then on Tuesday, I think, um, I read uh, Fairy Tale Vol Volume 1, uh, uh, which is a re-reread because I read it um, late last year and really enjoyed it. So this fairy tale is a story of, um, Lu of Natsu Dragnil, who is searching for his father, Ignil, a dragon. Um, during his journey to find him, he runs into Lucy Hartfilia, a young celestial spirit mage. Um, so in the first chapter, um, there's this kind of Carnotter's wizard who basically tries to seduce a lot, a bunch of women from this village in order to sell them into slavery. And Lucy, who's not affected by his magic, ends up getting suckered in because she thinks he can get her into fairy tale because he's actually claiming to be Natsu um, as Salamander. And it's not until the next chapter that they realize, oh, the Salamander they're referring to is actually Natsu instead of Igneal. So Natsu intervenes, he defeats the slavers and destroys half of the harbored Harajian and then flees with Lucy to join Fairy Tale, and their adventures begin from there. I really enjoyed this first volume. Um, it's great fun. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to picking up more volumes at some point. Now, the thing with um, that I've kind of discovered uh, lately is that for some reason, some uh, series aren't being published as regularly or aren't as in print regularly. Um, because I picked up Tola Bound Hanako Kun from Libris, and I've been looking to pick up the second volume because I love the first. And it's not available on Amazon, and the copies available on um, Libris. It's like in the 50s. It like, what? What? So hopefully they come, I mean, there'll be like another print run. Um, because I've seen a lot of this lately with manga. Or now that I've kind of gotten back into it. Because the same issues cropping up with um, Magi. That it took me forever to find... A copy for sale of Magi Volume 1. And that was, it eventually came back into print. And then Volume 2 kind of started having this issue, these issues, although I lucked out in that um, Half Price Books had a copy available um, this weekend, so I kind of jumped on that. So it's kind of annoying, but anyway. So in all, I really enjoyed um, the manga I read this past week, although I think binging, um, how many volumes did I get? One, two, seven volumes, um, might have put me into less of a mania mood. Um, so I'm not, I don't think I'm going to pick up as many volumes of manga like I did last month, although we shall see. Because I do want to pick up, particularly the ones that have like 60 or more volumes, I do want to kind of pick up those because that's going to take me a while to collect. But anyway, let's move on to what I've been reading the past few days. Um, so starting July 1st, I sort of decided to focus a bit more on history. So I started um, How the Word is Passed by Clint Smith. This is um, 
an exploration of um, the reckoning of with slavery. Uh, so Clint Smith, what he does in this book is he travels to a number of sites important in the history of slavery and sites that are reckoning in some way, shape or form with its history of slavery. Um, he starts off in Monticello, the home of Thomas Jefferson, and looks at how Monticello is grappling with um, Jefferson's role in the slave trade as a slave owner and his um, relationship with Sally Hemings. And it is it, this book is amazing. I am really enjoying it. Um, so far, I'm only I've only gotten to chapter four. Um, so I've gotten Monticello, the Whitney Plantation, which is an amazing chapter, um, Angola or Louisiana State Penitentiary, which was a plantation and is still a plantation for all intents and purposes. It's just, and I'm looking forward to uh, reading more of this book. It's just, just fantastic, and I will talk much more about this next week once I finished. Um, after how the word has passed, I'm going to be uh, reading The Golden Rhinoceros, Histories of the African Middle Ages by Francois Javier Fauvel. And then I will read, if I have enough time, The End of American Childhood, a History of Parenting from Life on the Frontier to the, Mod to the Managed Child by Paula S. Fass. And if I manage to have some extra reading time, um, because these are rather slim books, I'm probably going to have a go at um, a history that I had some issues with uh, last year. And I'll talk, about, talk more about that uh, next week, if I get to it before then, and if not, That'll be something I will be working on uh, next reading week. So until then, BookTube, thank you. Have a great evening and weekend. And if you're in America, happy 4th of July. And I will see you next week. And until then, stay safe.